Welcome. Thank you so much. It's certainly an honor and a privilege for um, our team, our players, our coaches, the people involved in our organization to be involved in the college football playoff uh, this year. Uh, I'd first of all like to congratulate uh, the coaches here with me uh, for the great team and the great year that their teams were able to have. Uh, we certainly uh, have a tremendous challenge in playing Coach Riley and um, the Oklahoma Sooners, uh, who have a great tradition and a great program, and certainly one of the most prolific offensive teams that I've seen in recent times. And their defense has certainly made a lot of plays uh, in critical times in the games that have helped them win some uh, close ones. So um, this is a tremendous privilege. We've been here before, and this is one of the great venues in sports uh, to be a part of. And uh, we feel very proud to be here with uh, some other very, very good programs that have great traditions. Great, thank you. Next, please welcome Lincoln Riley. Uh, yeah, it's a great honor to be to be back here. Uh, I think you know the guys here. We all realize how hard it is just to get to this point. The college football playoff is a dream for everybody at the start of the season, but the fact is there can only be four. And it takes a lot, a lot of people, a lot of hard work. Uh, very proud of our players, our staff, everybody involved with Oklahoma football to, to get back here and have a have another chance here in the college football playoff. Uh, certainly looking forward to, to playing, you know, Alabama. They've had an historic run with one of the greatest coaches of all time here in Coach Saban. So uh, we couldn't possibly have any more respect for them. The way they play it's going to certainly be a great challenge, but one that, that we're very much looking forward to. So uh, thank you so much for having us. We'll now turn it over to the coaches participating in the playoff semifinal at the Cotton Bowl. Please welcome Dabo Sweeney. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, an honor to be back here uh, and represent our team and our staff. Uh, this is something that uh, we have a great appreciation for uh, and, and what it takes to get here. Uh, but uh, uh, congratulations to these teams and these coaches as well. Uh, we're excited about going to the Cotton Bowl. Uh, I've, never, I've never been to the Cotton Bowl. And I think, uh, I think it was Clemson's first bowl ever, 1939. So uh, it's been a long time since Clemson's been there. And, and obviously, I have an opportunity to compete against, uh, you know, one of the most historic programs in all of college football and, and uh, with Notre Dame and, and, and Coach Kelly. So uh, just uh, look forward to a, uh, a great matchup and, uh, you know, just, just hopefully uh, uh, a great experience for our players and appreciate all that the college football playoff people do in putting this on. I know there's an enormous amount of work that goes in to, to make this a great experience for everyone involved. So appreciate that as well. All right, next, please welcome Brian Kelly. Well, it's certainly an honor uh, for the University of Notre Dame to be part of uh, you know, this great group of coaches and, and certainly teams. Uh, we're the new kid on the block. Um, this is our first uh, time in the college football playoffs, but uh, something that we uh, obviously uh, look towards each and every year. Um, you know, we're uh, you know, certainly uh, looking forward to an incredible matchup against a, a team in Clemson and a coach in Dabo Sweeney who's been here four years, um, knows what it's like, um, and um, we'll have a great challenge. But we have a great respect for all of the coaches that are here. Um, they've done it before. Um, so um, we certainly uh, look at it each and every year as, as a, a goal for our football team. Um, it's a difficult one, but um, one that uh, we all look forward to uh, in getting to this. So, again, a great honor. Great to be with these coaches today and uh, looking forward to um, the challenge in front of us. All right, thank you. We'll open it up for questions. Again, please raise your hand and we will get a microphone to you. We'll start here on the far right, please. Coach Saban, Dan Matthews, 6A, the fan here in Atlanta. You seemingly every offseason have to replace coaches, and you've seen to have success being able to bring in new coaches and have them fit into what you guys try to do inside the building. Why do you think that is? Well, we've, we've been very fortunate to have some outstanding assistant coaches, and uh, they've done a, a really good job for us. Uh, and I think because of the success that we've been able to sustain – Obviously, they work hard, as I worked hard when I was an assistant, so you could have the next opportunity. And we're certainly always happy for them uh, that they have uh, the opportunities to go on and be head coaches. And um, I think that you love continuity on your staff, but uh, I always look at this as uh, a, a challenge and an opportunity to add new energy, new enthusiasm, new ideas to your staff. Uh, 
we don't change our program. We don't hire people to come in and um, be independent contractors and do what they want to do. They sort of have to buy into what we do. But um, the new ideas, the new energy and enthusiasm that they bring is always very helpful to improving our program. So um, we're happy for those that get opportunities. Uh, we're happy to give opportunities to other people who can make a positive contribution to our program. All right, we'll go to the far left in the middle. Uh, Will Vandervoort with the Clemson Insider. Uh, Coach Sweeney, kind of along the same lines there, it's been the exact opposite for you. You've been able to keep that continuity and keep coaches in place. And how's that helped you? And, and, and how's the different contrast there with what Coach Saban was saying? Well, same thing. I mean, you know, we've had uh, a really good continuity over the past few years. We've had some change on our peripheral staff uh, and support staff and some things along the way. But, you know, uh, just two years ago, Marion Hobby uh, went to be the co D coordinator, I guess, with the Jaguars. Dan Brooks retired, had been with me from day one. And so it gave me an opportunity to hire uh, Lemansky and, and Todd Bates and uh, to promote Mickey. So those were guys that had been kind of on – our staff in a support role, um, so created new opportunity for them, and so uh, you know it's it's good. But we've got several guys on our staff that that will have opportunities to be head coaches at some point, uh, whenever that time comes, and and uh, you know you hope that you do a good job in preparing them for that opportunity if they want to do that, and uh, uh, you wish them well. And then you know again, it's as he said, it's 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 great for them, but also an opportunity for you to. Um, you know, bring new energy in uh, to your building. We'll go to the center on the right aisle. Coach Saban, Dimitri Chin, Action Sports and News. Uh, with your offensive coordinator heading to Maryland at the end of this year, uh, how significant significant of a role did he play in helping develop an offensive scheme for Tua to thrive in? Well, I think the, the thing that our offensive staff did, and Mike made a great contribution to that, was um, we always try to adapt to what our players can do. And I think that always starts with the quarterback. Uh, but we said in the beginning of the season this year that we're going to have a different kind of team on offense because we have really good skill players, we've got good runners, uh, we've got a couple quarterbacks who can operate the way our guys have uh, in the system that we have. So. Uh, I think all of our coaches contributed to it, but I think Mike did a really good job of organizing that, and um, the players responded well to it. And, um, you know, we made a lot of explosive plays, and I'm, I'm sure Mike would tell you that we'd like to be more consistent at times, as all coaches would say, but um, we feel really pleased with what we were able to accomplish offensively, and Tua did a great job, as did Jalen, I think, improved you know, dramatically this year as well. So I think our entire staff did a did a really phenomenal job. We'll go back in the center, second row. AP Stedham, WHEP, AM and FM, Foley, Alabama. This is for all four coaches. What is the X factor you've seen in your opponent? Coach Kelly, we'll go ahead and start with you and work our way down. Well, you know, obviously, you know, when you when you talk about um, playing an opponent, it's it's the ability to close games out, the ability to know how to win. Um, and, and that's Clemson. They know how to win football games. They've been winning. And so, you know, I, I think everybody that's up here uh, has developed and built a winning culture within their football team. So you can't, you can't pin that on any one particular player. That's something that's within, you know, the fabric of, of the football program that's been built over time. So that would be the X factor. Uh, well, I would say they're they're battle tested. You know, they've been in some great uh, uh, venues this year, some unique places that they've had to go play. They've played some uh, uh, excellent teams, and uh, and they have they've they've had a lot of different challenges. Uh, I'm just kind of really diving in deeply into into their season, but um, they've had handled adversity. Uh, they've played with leads. They played. They've come from behind. They've done a little bit of everything. Uh, so I think the, just that overall experience that they've had this year, you can see a very confident football team. Uh, they're incredibly well coached. They don't make a lot of mistakes. And uh, uh, I think the balance that they have uh, really presents some problems. Uh, this quarterback and the change, we, we went through kind of a similar thing that, that they did. Uh, and their quarterback has, has just grown and grown and grown as the season has gone. So uh, I would just say the confidence and the fact that they're battle-tested 
and uh, from the experience that they've had this year, uh, you know, gives them every reason to be confident going into into this postseason. Yeah, tough to tough to narrow it down to one uh, when you start to to study Alabama and all they do well. Uh, thing I've seen from afar, and I don't want to act like I'm an expert on their program. I'm not in those walls day to day, but you see the unselfishness, you know, in that program. I mean the the most obvious notable example is, is Jalen Hurts, you know, and how how he handled that entire situation. I, I don't know if there's a coach in the country that doesn't look back at that and say, every kid, every college football player, every young football player out there, every six year old that's getting ready to play the game ought to see that story. Because that's we we need more guys like him. And uh so really impressed with how their whole program, you know, managed, you know, great players at different positions and then as a team, I, the obvious thing would be to say that you know Alabama has certainly been, you know, more explosive offensively, you know, than they've than they've been in a while, and they've been good offensively, no question. But this this group's been different, and they're certainly you know fantastic defensively, like they've been forever. So, uh, great challenge, but you know, couldn't couldn't say how I could not be more impressed with Jalen Hurts how he handled that just from afar. A uh, big fan of that kid, and and how that entire situation was managed. Well, I, I think that Oklahoma is a team that certainly knows how to win. Uh, they've had some um, great games this year, high-scoring games where their defense has come through when they need to. Uh, but I do think this is one of the most dynamic teams that I've seen for a long, long time in terms of the way they play offense. I think 